Moving forward. Right now, a future president could be running as a local candidate on your ballot. This person is vying to represent you, your family, and your community. Do you know what they are and what they stand for? Vote411.org is your tool for accurate and unbiased, up-to-the-minute election information on the candidates running in local races. Just enter your address to get started. Your vote is your power, the power to decide who represents you in 2022 and beyond. Get online, get the facts, and make your voice heard on Election Day. Moving forward. It's a windy morning in Haiku as I prepare for the interview. I'm running a little late, but Ellie Cochran calls on time, and uh, we talk story while I finish setting up. When we moved to um, San Diego, he got stationed at Camp Pendleton, and after he retired from the Marine Corps, he, he became very uh, engaged in the community. Uh, he used to check me out of school, take me to City Hall and do stuff out there. It was very, he was very much like, uh, he was the real life equivalent of like a Rick and Morty grandpa. And uh, <laughs> so he would like, he'd come into the principal's office and he'd talk to Principal Dodd and he'd be like, hey, I like to take out my grandson today. He got one appointment. And then he'd never say what the appointment was and then be like, oh, Hulk, you're out for the day. I'd be like, oh, shoots, what's up? And then next thing you know it, we're riding to city council meeting, city hall. He was very good about uh, you know, helping the church cook cool, what it needed from the people and from the politicians. And so, but I never ran myself. I've, I've always been the artist and uh, like, but then like the guy who knows how it works. So uh -huh. I just, I mean, I just grew up around it so much. And then I finally figured out a way of like, how do I put this to work after watching the whole machine and then knowing what's broken with the machine, but I really don't want to play that kind of a game in my life because I'm suited for another. Yeah, yeah, it's not for everybody, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I like my soul intact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, cool. Well, thanks for, you know, giving a person a, a venue to be heard and, uh, you know, get the, get the word out. Yeah. All right, well, I think we're about ready to start the interview here. Your sound levels seem fine. So... Uh -huh. Well, let's just start in the simplest space. Uh, let everybody know who you are, what you're intended to be running for, and what you're currently doing in the community. All right. Sounds good. Uh, my name is Ellie Cochran. I'm from Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii, <clears throat> and I'm running for the West Maui State House seat, which is now uh, the new District 14, the we just went through the census, so they had recalibrated, you know, the population base around the state. And so West Maui now uh, incorporates <clears throat> Ma'alaya, Lahaina, start heading north out towards the Kapalua, Honakahau, Kahakaloa area, back around um, to Waihe'e and Waihehu. Currently, this, this district is only has North Kihei in it and Ma'alaya around only to just pass like where Kapalua is. 
<clears throat> so that's the difference in the seat today. And that word needs to get out that the districts have, the lines have been redrawn in the districts. Uh, and yeah, I'm a former uh, West Maui County Council member. I did that for four terms, eight years, and then ran for mayor uh, unsuccessfully. But, you know, for me, I think it was a success and a blessing because at, after that campaign, <clears throat> my mom had passed. And then a week after my mom passed, my husband had a heart attack and then COVID kicked in and La la la, and it's like I'm glad I'm not running the show here. So it was a blessing in disguise for sure to not win that election, and so I was able to take a couple year break between COVID and just you know taking a rest from politics, and uh, now I'm back in the current uh, House representative Angus McKelvey has decided to not rerun for the seat, so it leaves it open, and typically an open seat is much easier in a sense, to uh, run for. Can I stop you right there? Absolutely. So I, so the thing to br- that I want to bring up here with the education with our audience, because a lot of people don't really know what your position does, and then the even bigger part of like what it means. So we have a, we have a double education experience here with our audience, because most of the people that listen to this show are barely learning how to engage. We don't have enough of a voter turnout. So I really want to take advantage of, of that education factor with you right now before you go any further on explaining your campaign. So two part question is one uh, function of your elected position that you're vying for and then the understanding of what it means to be fighting in a race without an incumbent. Okay. Uh, Well, this is a state uh, seat, so very different from a county level of government. You in the state level that that's uh, you know it takes care of places like harbors. There's of course different state roadways. Uh, there's hospitals involved, so health, you know, schools. Uh, Department of Education is in this uh, in this field. Uh, airports, right? So you can t- deal with tourism and and management of that. Of course, taxation. And so there's a different level um, on the state, um, you know, Kuleana and sort of responsibilities on the state level is how I see it. Um, But for me, bringing that county knowledge to the state level, I think is is definitely a plus. Um, And um, what was the other question? How, what, what is it like uh, running for Open seat, yes. How how? What's an open seat race like versus an incumbent race? So, well, incumbent typically has the upper hand because they're in it. They know the job. They usually have a track record to show, hey, look at all the great things I've already accomplished and done. And look at the things I'm working on for you. You know, continue, continue to vote me in and I will continue this great work I'm doing. That type of message. Um, my first race ever, I... It was a race of seven people. It was also an open seat. One of the main reasons I decided to jump in because I came from nowhere. I had I never voted until I ran for office. I had to obviously register to vote to vote for myself. So I hear that demographic of people who I didn't even know what a council member was. I didn't know where the county building was. I knew nothing. But, you know, I was in um, saving Honolulu and I... I learned that you need to be at the table to make decisions to protect these special places, which I did. And I, and I um, prevailed out of a race of seven people. Uh, And, you know, so an open seat is is kind I think more like an equal playing field. I look at it and versus the incumbent typically has the upper hand, you know, and, and, and it's usually a lot more difficult to unseat an incumbent. So with this open seat, um, I felt I have a really good chance. And currently, I uh, here I have one opponent. This person has pulled papers but has not filed as of yet. I have officially filed, so I am technically an official candidate because I pulled papers and filed my papers. <clears throat> 
Fantastic. Thank you for explaining that. There are a lot of people out here that, that don't really know these types of nuances between roles and positions. They see all of these these types of positions available to run for. And uh, it can be confusing at times. So thank you for explaining to that. Yeah, I'd like to touch on the fact that, you know, I, I think, as you mentioned, your viewers aren't, they don't, they're very new, right? They're kind of green and, and sort of rookies to this whole, uh, this whole business of politics, per se. And again, I was a simple surfer, worked, you know, all I cared about was what's the tide, swell and wind doing. That's all I cared about. But I live in Honolulu Valley off the grid. And Honolulu Bay is a, you know, world-renowned surf spot and, and diving and, you know, snorkeling. So when I heard the company called Maori Land and Pine back in the day, they're out of business now, uh, wanted to basically privatize it, build a gated community there and all that, I was like, uh-uh, I ain't having it. But let me educate the community and see what the community thinks. Well, as you can imagine, everybody uh, was like, uh, hell no. And we, you know, we fought it. And I got involved to figure out how do we make sure this doesn't happen. And that was about me running for office. And that's really what spurred me, you know, into politics. Nothing else. And it's one of those things where, you know, when it hits you on a personal level, that's when you kind of wake up and go, oh, wait, what's going on? So I understand when it's not directly affecting you, a certain situation or issue, you tend to not really care or, you know, pay attention to it. But when it's in literally your back front yard, you you wake up, you know, and you, you end up wanting to do something about it. So that's how I um, got involved in this whole politics thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's been uh, definitely a um, <clears throat> it's never never a dull moment I, I'll put it that way <laughs> dig it dig it so um, now then I guess the question would be what additional things from your previous positions and along the way that you've learned that you can apply to this uh, this seat that you're looking for well, number one, a lot of politics has to do with relationships. It's relationships and building rapport. You have bridges to others, whether you agree politically or not. Uh, I mean, you have to have a respectful, professional, you know, working relationships with others. And I feel like I've built that throughout the years. And um, I, I do have a track record of things I've accomplished and it, it does take collaboration, right? It takes partnerships. It takes people working together. And I think um, that I bring, but also the knowledge of legislation, yeah, crafting legislation, the knowledge of um, budgets. The, this county council just balanced the billion-dollar budget. When I was there, we were balancing like 800 Eight hundred eighty, you know, million dollars. So I'm familiar with that. So there's a lot of things that I can bring to the state level. Um, but again, it's a it's different um, responsibilities versus county. But the basics of legislation and and how all that operates is relatively the same. You know, it's just different subject matter. So that's kind of what I feel like. Um, you know, is is a positive and a plus for me to. Uh, apply to this position right on right on so now i'd like to know uh for our audience at home what is what what sits at the top of of your campaign what are you personally looking to do with this position and to benefit uh maui and hawaii yeah uh so you know and for me it's it's i gotta always check myself because the seats that I've ran for are county-wide seats. <laughs> so I have to always look into, all, you know, three islands, right? Lanai Molokai from the Mahaina to Hana. And I got to rethink that, oh, wait a minute, I'm just going to represent this district. It's Maalaya around the head of Maui to Waiehu. And look into this, this area and what are the issues in this area? You know, and that's the voice that I, of course, I'm going to be the voice of Maui Nui, but in particular, I need to be this, the advocate and super strong voice for this dis district. <clears throat> so, of course, in this area, I feel like it's a, it's like a microcosm of a bigger 
the, of the state issues because it's so different. We have Kanapali line area, resorty town, right? We're one of the the bread baskets where the goose that lays the golden egg for, for not just Maui County, but for the state. We're probably in the top three, South Maui, West Maui, and Waikiki. <clears throat> so, you know, the management of tourism and everything that comes along with the impacts of our tourism industry, of course, I can, you know, address that on the state level for sure. And then there's, you know, the land and water issues that are going on um, with the uh, cult of Commission on Water uh, Resource Management, you know, that's that state <clears throat> level again. And, um, you know, the, the Department of Education, the schools, Lahaina Luna High School here in particular, the boarding program is always at risk of not being funded, at risk of just being dissolved. And that just cannot happen. I mean, it is a historical school, oldest school west of the Rockies only public school with a boarding program, on and on. I mean, it cannot die. It cannot disappear. So that's one of my really hot topics for this community and have been, I'm already working with it. I just had a meeting yesterday and we're trying to figure out a way to, yeah, keep it alive and, and revise or revamp if need be. <clears throat> and, you know, I was infrastructure chair, uh, infrastructure um committee chair for eight years on the county level so i'm very very familiar with things like our, our you know our sewer and our water i know it's not sexy subjects but you know landfills roads and and um, shoreline things and ocean you know so that stuff is in my you know my my toolbox of knowledge and definitely i can help me um gain a you know a broader perspective on things in order to to create, you know, get the best solutions for the issues going on, especially roads, right? Uh, traffic and, and all that. We're trying to move the roads inland <clears throat> away from the water in the Olawalu area. Um, Waihe'e, they are not happy with these speed bumps that <coughs> county implemented. The traffic on the backside, Kakaloa is bad with the visitors. So <clears throat> all these things I'm very, very familiar with. And I feel like I bring a broad... Um, yeah, background of knowledge to to um, make good decisions. Dig it, dig it, yeah. dig it. Um, so uh, we have uh, a f we have a little bit of extra time. So, is there anything before uh, we have any uh, like send off pleasantries? Tell us how to vote for you, etc. Is there anything that is big to your campaign that you haven't mentioned yet that you feel has to be mentioned? I think overall, um, you know, we need participation. I was interviewed <clears throat> one time. Sorry, there's a thing in my throat. Um, I was interviewed by CNN, online type of CNN <clears throat> uh, reporting, and it was West Maui was have the worst, number one, our state had the worst voter turnout. Yep. And West Maui had the worst voter turnout in the state. So yep. we were like the, the worst. You know, we were number one in being the <laughs> worst voter turnout. It's like, what the hell? And so it's just, you know, people, please need to get involved because I tell you, and I hear every day all the time, why, why, one vote, what, is, what difference does it make? And I look back at my own life story with Save Honolulu Coalition. I have this divine intervention, kupuna, whatever. It was, I woke up literally in the middle of the night going, wait a minute, something's happening here and I got to find out what it is. Because the company was... <clears throat> giving us these beautiful maps and pretty pictures like, hey, surfers, we're going to improve, you know, the cliff and the bay. We're going to give you picnic benches and barbecue and showers and bathrooms and fix the road, blah, blah, blah. Does that sound good? We're like, cool. yeah, sounds cool, man. I mean, we'll, we'll like that. But then when I kept looking at the maps, I'm like, what's over here, though, on the map? And they're like, no, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about up over here. I go, no, I want to talk about that. Well, it ended up being um, a private golf course. And then across the street, it was going to be a uh, 45 luxury home gated community. Shoot. And then that's when I went, oh, wait a minute. You know, and um, <clears throat> so that's when I educated community. Then that's when I jumped into office. And then that's when today, literally, we did save Honolulu. It started with one person, you know. And so it, it to me, it you no, know, it, it does matter. One person can make a difference, but that it's the catalyst or you will become the vessel to, you know, to bring other people, to educate others, to get involved, to be a part of. 
And um, because you do need numbers, right? You need numbers. I needed numbers to get the Save Honolulu Coalition up and going and also numbers to win the election. And I think that's really important because you need to have a seat at that table because others are going to make the decision for you then. You know, you don't like your high taxes? Well, then um, then testify at the county council <laughs> about the tax rates then. You know, you don't like paying that registration fee? There's, you can have a voice in that. You know, you can craft the numbers that you want to see. Yeah, property tax, all that. But again, people just sort of kick back and go, oh my God, the price went up again. Like, yeah, and you actually had a chance to be a part of that decision making. You know, so I think it's super important that people just got to get involved. That's that's what I want. You know, love it, love it. <clears throat> well, we have just a little time here left. So, what I like from you is to let everybody know how they can engage with you online, where to find you next in person, how you're taking your time to go through the community and. Uh, and interact with everyone and how they can talk story with you and catch up with you and follow your campaign. And if they like what they hear today, how they can even, you know, contribute. Yeah, right. yeah so I have a um, website, votellicochran.com. So that's um, V-O-T-E. My name is spelled E-L-L-E-C-O-C-H-R-A-N. Um, so vote elliecochran.com and I also have Facebook and Instagram and all that. So that's where I'm at on social media. And then I, you know, my cell phone has been my cell phone forever. I'm not, I don't intend to change it. And I welcome people to call, you know, that's how people get to know me and, and vice versa. So my cell number is 808-281-7709. That's 808-281. 281-7709 and I welcome phone calls anytime, whatever. I, I love talking story with people. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be out of the country for a few weeks here, but when I return, I'll be involved with all the wonderful events that are coming up. The Barrio Fiesta, um, <clears throat> you know, there's what else? Uh, Maui Ag Fest is coming up. So there's some wonderful big events publicly where I'm definitely going to make an appearance and, you know, hobnob and cruise around and get to meet people. I think real quickly, maybe another time we can elaborate on this one. I recently did a DNA test and I found out that um, I'm half, I'm 50% Visayan, which I did not know I was. Jeez. So that's been a really huge curveball thrown into my life um, <clears throat> that, you know, um, I'm... Filipino, which I've embraced and I'm very excited and very proud to be. But it's just a strange thing to not know, you know, 58 years later that you didn't know really who you were or what you were. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a mind blowing thing. So, Well, I definitely believe as children of the Pacific, we're, we're all on a journey to, to still find our roots because of the way that, you know, everything played out historically out here. But I think that's a subject for another time. But I will like to end this by asking you, can we get you back on in a month, maybe two, down the road, and you could kind of fill us in on the journey, the trials and tribulations, or any more of the, you know, what's going on or new things that come along your way? Sure, yeah, by all means, I'd love to. Yes, thank you for this opportunity. Again, thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you for being being able to open up and spread your mana'o with our audience and let them know we really need, like you said, we really need to educate. We need to inspire that single one to step up because every time one steps up, more will follow. And I think we would see a lot more progress if people accepted those simple kulianas in life. Those little things, like those infrastructure items that you like work on, like the sewer and the roadways. And because people tend, tend to think that, you know, oh, you know, the house cleans itself after a while, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. I again, you know, it's and it's and it becomes interesting. It becomes actually fun because when you can see that you actually make a difference, that what you say and what you share and when you get involved, actually something happens in your favor or you you know, you educated somebody who didn't know. These decision makers, they're not all every they don't know everything. You know, they need to they're they are supposed to be your voice in that seat and that's what i say i am the voice of the people i always have been I'm not the voice of big money i'm not the voice of 
you know, power, fame, fortune, and glory people. I'm of us guys, the everyday working class, but, but across the board, of course, you know, I listen to everybody from A to Z and take it in and make the best decisions that affect the broadest majority. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun, uh, profession and I encourage others to jump in. <laughs> well, mahalo for all of your thoughts and, uh, for, uh, your fire and spirited competition and your willingness to come on the air. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I enjoy it. So thank you again for reaching out. Thank you. Aloha. Okay. Aloha. <gasps> Rabbit Holes is a Manava Cow production. This episode was produced by Kadika Hoke and Sarah Rodriguez. Make sure to subscribe and follow on your favorite podcast platforms to add our weekly episodes to your queue.